Hi, I'm Jim Pence and welcome to Drawing with Chalk. Every week we're going to be doing a new picture and I'm going to be showing you how you can draw this at home. I'm going to be using a material called Lecturer's Chalk and we'll talk about that in a minute. But it's a great way to learn how to draw simple pictures, easy pictures, and have a lot of fun in the process. So I hope you will join us every week. I'm, uh, you know, excited about the different possibilities that we're going to have, the different kind of pictures that we're going to draw. And uh, hopefully in the process you're going to learn more and more about drawing, about composition, about art uh, in general. So uh, every week please come to the See the Light blog and uh, enjoy the uh, process of learning how to draw. Now you can just enjoy this just by watching, but I'm hoping that you'll draw at home too. So the first thing that I want to do in our very first podcast is to talk about supplies that we'll need. And uh, we might as well start with the paper. Uh, I draw, as you can tell, on a very, very large sheet of paper. Uh, it's called bogus paper. And uh, this is actually, uh, you've heard the term green and, and how environmentally friendly we like to be nowadays. Well, this is, this is a very green paper, even though it's gray. Uh, it's green because this is recycled paper. Uh, and its main use is uh, for packing material. So uh, it's perfect for chalk art because it's got a nice rough, no, not really, really rough, but it's got a, a, what artists call a tooth. It's got enough of a roughness to its surface that it will hold the chalk and you won't have chalk dust just you know falling off like if you try to draw uh, with this kind of chalk that I'm going to use here on newsprint which is really really smooth or you know bond paper like from out of your copy machine uh, ninety percent of the chalk will just fall off uh, with paper that has nice tooth in it I'm going to take a little little white here and you know you can just draw on that and, and that paper is, uh, is going to hold that chalk and it's going to let you uh, draw some really awesome things. So that's the first thing that uh, you'll need. Now in the uh, class materials uh, there's going to be a, a PDF and uh, you can you can find that uh, at the bottom uh, of this blog page and it's going to list where you can buy um, the kind of paper that I use. Now your first question might be well, you know, how big is that paper? Well, it's, it's uh, uh, 40 inches vertical by 54 inches uh, horizontal. And the next question is, where am I going to set up to draw that? Well, the, the nice thing is that even though you buy it in a very large sheet, you don't have to draw on the whole thing. When I'm, when I'm drawing in front of a church or some, something, then uh, I'll use an entire sheet. But if I'm working on a... Uh, more serious picture that that I'm just drawing for the fun of it or drawing uh, for you know just to create art then a lot of times I'll do like I did here and I'll just divide it up into four sheets well if that's still too big for you you know you can go down here and you can divide it up again uh, and, and so you can actually get as many as uh, you know 16 sheets of paper out of one sheet of bogus paper. One sheet of bogus paper costs about 50 cents. Now when you add in shipping then it pushes the cost up to about a dollar a sheet. But so you know you can have 16 sheets of paper for a dollar and that's really a pretty good value when you uh, when, you know when you compare it to other art paper. So you're going to need bogus paper. You can go uh, to regular art supply stores and buy bogus paper. There are different uh, different outlets online and I've got those listed also uh, on uh, the the blog but uh, my experience has been that the big sheets uh, work best but again feel free to get the smaller ones if you want to uh, but uh, it's just as easy to buy the big one and just tear it up or cut it up into smaller pieces and you'll find it's really pretty economical the next thing is lecturer's chalk. 
Now, normally when we think of drawing with chalk, we think of drawing with something like uh, these, which are called soft pastels. Soft pastels are a little bit smaller. Let me pull out one. I've got a yellow stick of chalk. I've got it kind of dirty here. I've got a yellow stick of lecturer's chalk, and that's chalk pastel. Okay, you see them side by side. There's a big difference in the sizes. The lecturer's chalk is, let me hold my, my white stick there, is a one inch cube, or not one inch cube, but one inch square by three inches long. So it's a really large piece of chalk, and the reason the chalk artists like to use this is because you can cover a lot of area very quickly. Uh, so that's one of the advantages of the big chalk. But if you're working in a smaller format, if you decide you're going to cut your paper down into you know, small sheets like this, then you may find this a little bit too large to work with. Well, the neat thing is this, is, this chalk is very easy uh, to cut up into smaller pieces. And I'm going to show you how I usually do it. I will usually take a tool that has a, a pick on the end of it. Um, some, you know, you can do this with your fingernail, you can do it with, uh, you know, uh, well, be careful if you use a knife, uh, but anything, and all, all I do to get smaller pieces is I will take my tool and I will score right along the edge of the chalk. I'm just going to go all the way around. Okay, and then once I've got that score, I can just snap that off, and I've got a smaller chunk to work with. And a lot of times, particularly when I'm working with black light chalk, I will actually take this and score it diagonally across so that I make it into two even smaller triangles. And here we go. We're going to snap it. There you go. So now I've taken you know, that great big stick of chalk, and I've got a piece that's a, a nice workable size, and if I'm working in a smaller, you know, format here, then this is just about right, and it's a, it's a good size to work with. So, so when you, uh, you know, you, you buy one stick of this, you, almost like with the paper, you can end up with, you know, 10 or 12 smaller pieces to work with, and I recommend doing that. Uh, lecturer's chalk again. Uh, there'll be a PDF at the bottom of the uh, uh, of the blog page that you can uh, uh, will give you the address where you can get this. If you prefer not to use it and you want to go ahead with just you know you've got some soft pastels at home, go ahead and use those. They work again just as well. Uh, and actually, one of the advantages is that often you have a greater range of colors to work with. So, so even though I'm going to be demonstrating using lecturer's chalk, uh, don't forget that everything that I'm doing you can pretty much do with soft pastels. So, uh, so if you've got some of these at home and you've got some pastel paper, uh, then you're ready to go. So that's the, that's the next thing in supply. Now, something else that I use, uh, and I use it a lot, and I have different varieties that I use, are erasers. Uh, erasers come in really handy for taking chalk and either lifting it out, blending it, doing any number of things. Uh, again, uh, a lot of times in this large format, it really helps to have an eraser. Now, there are you know a couple of kinds to work with. This is just an old traditional felt eraser here. Uh, this one has kind of almost like a soft plush carpeting on the top of it. This one is a foam eraser, and it's uh, designed for whiteboards. Uh, the bottom half of it is foam. The top of it, again, has sort of almost an indoor-outdoor carpet type feel to it. Uh, I like the foam ones, and I'm, I'll show you in a minute something I do with those. But uh, just to demonstrate, you know, I can come in here, take a lot of this chalk off, and if you're practicing different kinds of techniques, it's nice to be able to just erase your paper and, and start again. And, and with, uh, with a good um, 
felt eraser, you can do that. I'm going to put some more color up here. I mean, I'm going to draw in a tree. A very white tree. Incidentally, this is a tip for practicing, uh, particularly if you're working on this gray paper. Uh, you can practice different things, practice them in, in white, and one, you're not using up all of your chalk, and two, you're really not wasting your paper because uh, you can come in and, and just lift most of that white out of there. Okay, now this is the felt kind, and it's going to come in. It's also going to lift it out. I want to show you something that I do with this other kind that is a foam eraser. I'm going to make a kind of a big splotch here just uh, to show you two different things. Now if you use the, the carpeting end of it, you know, it will remove the chalk as well. But if you use the foam end of it, the foam end actually works to blend the chalk. And as you can see, here now it, the foam has uh, actually moved the chalk more into the paper and softened it. And a lot of times if I'm trying to blend chalk or, or just want to strengthen it in the paper uh, so that I can layer something else on, then I will use the foam eraser. Now what I tend to do is I buy several of those and I will cut them up into smaller pieces. You know, I've got an oblong one here, I've got a triangle piece here, and uh, another triangle, just different sizes. And I'll use these because they will allow me to uh, cut in, if I'm working again on detail, this one still has a little bit of blue chalk on it. So, you know, if I'm trying to put in a sky or something like that, uh, that's what I use. Okay, other, other tools that you use, this is, this is a very inexpensive one, but a very important one. Uh, it's a, uh, a kind of dirty, but it's a, a wet uh, washcloth. Uh, your hands get very dirty when you work with chalk. And so it's nice to have this just kind of wet and damp. I use baby wipes a lot too, but those, those can get kind of expensive. This is reusable, and I don't want it dripping. I just want it wet and damp, and that way I can clean my hands off. I keep a, an equally dirty dry towel so that I can dry my hands off and uh, then I'm ready to draw. Well, that's enough about supplies. Again, uh, look at the PDF that's uh, on this web page and it will tell you all the supplies you need, where you can get them, and uh, roughly what they cost. So, we're going to move on now and do a really simple drawing. The first thing that we're going to learn is to uh, draw skies and to just uh, learn how to put in clouds and, and make those clouds uh, look nice. So uh, I'm going to get my materials organized and we'll be back and I'll show you how to draw a uh, nice summer sky, let's call it. I'll be back in a minute. All right, first thing I'm going to do as we get ready to draw our sky, and I'm going to use my eraser. This is the foam eraser, but I'm using the carpet side of it to get some of that chalk off of there. All right, now I'm going to use several different colors. With lecturer chalk, lecturer's chalk, the color palette is, is kind of limited, and there aren't just a huge range of colors to work with. So when I do a sky, I'm normally going to use four sticks of chalk. I've got white, I've got light blue, this is kind of a turquoise, and uh, this is a, a dark blue. There is actually a darker blue, and I, I do use that sometimes, but I use that more if I want a more of an ominous type sky, and I don't want this one to be ominous. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is work at toning the paper. Uh, now toning the paper, ch chalk or pastels always work best on a toned surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm just going to throw in some clouds. When when people draw clouds a lot of times you know they they just they make circles or they make maybe big circles or they you know they kind of get this 
idea working. You know, if you go outside and you look at uh, clouds, uh, you're going to see they're all different shapes. There's not a lot of uh, consistency, and very few of them look like cotton balls or, you know, or sheep. Uh, the clouds are all sorts of different shapes. So we want to be sure that when we draw our clouds, that they're going to not look like I, you know, put 15 cotton balls up in the sky. Now, the way I do it, and this is hopefully will, will be helpful to you, I'm going to use the side of the chalk. Now, not the actual flat side, but most of the time I'm going to draw with the corners. And the reason I draw with the corners is it gives me a good solid surface to draw with. Okay, so I'm just going to come in, I'm just going to throw in some shapes. And, and you can do this too, again, if you're using regular pastels, whatever you're working with, just, just throw some shapes in here. Remember, normally I might not come all this way down for the sky, but I'm going to do it because that's pretty much all we're drawing today is a sky. Okay. Now, a lot of times when I do a, a sky, I'm going to put a lot of white in the center, and that's because as a chalk artist, uh, I have to have somewhere to hide my black light picture. So, uh, so that's part of the reason that uh, that there's a lot of white there. But I'm not hiding a black light picture, so I just want to just want to throw in some clouds. Now I'm going to take my dark blue, and I'm going to come up here. And again, using the side, or the corner side of the chalk, I'm going to just lay in some dark blue near the top. If you go outside and look, you'll see that the sky gets darker, or the blue gets more intense the higher you get. And that's because the sun isn't passing through uh, quite as much atmosphere as it is down low. So. Whenever you do a, a sky, or at least whenever I do a sky, I do try to kind of reflect that. Now again, our, our color palette is a little bit limited here. I'm going to throw in a couple little gaps in here where we've got some blue showing through. Okay, and then as I get lower down, I'm going to go to my light blue, still using the same idea, using the corner edge of the chalk. And just kind of laying in. And I'm going to come all the way down and come across the bottom here with just solid blue. Okay, so we've got we've got the chalk in. Now you can either blend with your hands, which I do a lot, uh, or you can use the foam. Foam comes in really handy when I'm doing this because. Again, it doesn't take the chalk off. See, if I use the, if I use the, uh, uh, I lost my eraser. Where did it go? Okay. Oh, there it is. I lose things easily sometimes. All right. If I, if I use the eraser end, sometimes it will lift too much chalk off. So I want to make sure that the chalk is getting rubbed in and I'm going to go back to my foam triangle here and so I'm just going to go through and blend it a bit and you always want to think while you're doing this where the, uh, the elements are that you were drawing and the clouds are going to be in front of this blue sky so I want to keep that in mind as I come in here and blend. Now you see down here this is blending a little bit nicer that's because this turquoise tends to be a little softer chalk than the other than that dark blue. Okay I'm going to come through and again I'm just going to, you notice I haven't touched the white yet stay out of that for now. Again, right now I'm toning the paper 
And the best thing to do is just be kind of loose when you do this. Don't don't get all uh, you know all, all tight and try to make it absolutely perfect. Don't try to shape every single thing. Just get in there. And what I always tell people is have fun. You know that's that's what drawing is all about: creativity and having fun, having a good time. And in the process, you make something beautiful. Okay, I'm going to come in here a little bit. See if I can smooth this out a little bit. It's okay to add a little extra chalk if you need to. Go in there and lay a little bit more in if it's not covering too well. If it's letting too much of that background sparkle of the paper shine through, I'll come in and just add a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to wipe my hands a little bit. And I'm going to dry my hands. There we go. Okay, now what are we going to do with the white? Well, I'm going to come back in with my white, just like this. And I'm going to strengthen it a little bit. Remember, I'm just using the the edges, the corners of the chalk, just laying in, and I'm pressing pretty hard right now. And I'm just again kind of freestyling some cloud shapes. I'm going to lay some more clouds in here. Now there's sometimes when, like these two blue things here, it could be could be sky showing through. It also could be kind of dark blue clouds that are being you know, backlit or any number of things. So so you've got a lot of freedom. Now once I get to a certain point, which is like right about now, my next step is to actually use my hand uh, to blend the chalk. And the way I'm going to do that. I'm just going to come in and real nice circular motion. Most of the time it works best with the palm of my hand, but but I want to just get all of those colors working together there and softening those edges. Once I've done that, now I have much less defined clouds. I'm going to come in and wipe my hands again. And my, my towel is my friend because it keeps me from transferring chalk from one part of the paper to the other when I don't want to. All right, now that my hands are clean again, I'm going to come back in with my white, again, my big stick of white. And let's define the edges of some of these clouds a little bit. Okay, now it's very easy to overdo this, so just take some time. The main thing you want to do is make sure that there's variety in, in all of the shapes that you're putting in. In other words, that you know you're not again doing the same thing everywhere. You want that variety to, to make the picture interesting. Okay. Also, you want to make sure that those clouds at places are touching the edge of your paper so that it doesn't look again like you have a, just a couple big circles uh, in the middle uh, of the paper. Okay, I'm going to come down here. Be a little lighter with this batch. If you look at clouds, most of the time they're not strictly white. They're going to pick up a lot of colors from other things around them. Okay, now you can come in and 
and I, here I use my fingertips and soften and again just laying in on top of that Just for fun. Again, using my fingers to soften that out and to suggest the look of clouds there. Now, if you try this and you don't find it works quite as easily as it looks like it's working here. And keep in mind, I've been doing this for 38 years now. So for me, it's almost second nature to just go in and, and create a bunch of clouds and, and uh, I don't really even have to think about it much. I just take the chalk and go. But, but there is a learning process here. Uh, and the more you practice, the better you'll get. And again, the nice thing is Say you get to the end of this and doing your sky and you just don't like how it came out. Uh, you know, hey, you've got your old friend the eraser here. Go in, erase it, and it won't take 100% of the chalk off. But it'll take enough off to where you can come back in and, and uh, try again. And uh, I, I always recommend, you know, if it's not working for you, don't get discouraged. Just keep trying. Try something different. Okay. I just like to use my fingers to soften out the bottom edges here of these clouds as, as I go through and kind of shape things. And again, you can go on and on and on and, and work and work and work. Uh, it's possible to overwork it, so the trick is knowing when to stop. I'm mostly doing this because I want to take it all the way down to the bottom because that's going to be your assignment this week if you're uh, drawing along with us is to uh, do your own clouds. Find a piece of pastel paper or bogus paper if you bought it and <clears throat> just do a whole page of clouds just like this. Because as you do that you're going to get a feel for how to create those. And although it's, uh, it would be unusual for you to just do a painting of, of straight clouds, uh, there are going to be times when you want to have a, a dramatic cloud effect in your drawing. And once you learn how to create clouds like this, you can add that in. And a lot of things that we're going to learn uh, as, we, as we do uh, chalk art every week, you're going to learn picture elements, different things that you can mix and match and add in and, and uh, create your own beautiful uh, pictures with. And so you can call uh, you know, clouds a picture element. It's, it's something that, that you're going to draw that you're going to include you know, in your pictures. Maybe not every picture, maybe not the same way. There's sometimes when you don't want a lot of dramatic clouds in your picture because they may draw attention away from uh, whatever is the the actual uh, you know, object that that is your focal point. So anyway, this is a page of clouds, and that's our lesson for today. So get some paper, get some chalk, or get some pastels, and uh, try doing a uh, a page of clouds. And if you don't like it, erase it. Start over again. Keep working. But most important, I want you to have fun because that's what drawing is all about creating beauty, having fun in the process. All right, I will see you next week, and uh, I don't know what we'll do, but we'll have fun. Thanks for watching.